What's up, gang? So this is going to be part two of Ignore the Haters. And we're going to be talking about what happens when you ignore the haters and you let God use you. So let's get into it. Walk it like I'm talking. Walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it like I'm talking. If you haven't seen part one, I've linked it in the description. I think it's going to give you context about today's conclusion of the story. And we're talking about the story of David and Goliath. So this story is so juicy. And we left off in 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 37. So today we'll be picking up on 1 Samuel 17, 38 through to 50. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the beginning and then there's so many gems in there. I'm going to read directly from the Bible from maybe around verse 45 to verse 50. All right. So we left off with David being in with Saul, the king, and saying that he was going to fight Goliath. Now, now Saul has given David his armor. So he's given him a helmet, a coat, all of this stuff to protect him to fight Goliath. But David is, he's, he's young, he's a youth. And he, this is like full grown men's heavy armor, which he's never worn before. So David is just like, I can't wear this. I've not used them before. I can't even walk in this. And so he took them off. So he took them off and he walked down to the brook. He found five stones and he put them in his little satchel and he carried on. He went down to the line to meet Goliath. So Goliath sees him coming and Goliath is just like, what why have you come to me with a stick like am i a dog like what are you doing you're just a little boy like what's going on and started to curse him out and it says specifically that goliath cursed david by his gods so he was just talking crazy basically he was talking crazy and invoking the power of his gods small g right? so i'm going to be reading from the nlt version which is the new living translation my preferred version is the ESV, which is the English Standard Version. But don't come for me in the comments, guys, because really, there's so many translations out there because at the end of the day, English is not a sophisticated language. It can't really grasp the true meanings of a lot of the things that we read, right? That's why we have to look through different translations to try to get a better understanding. You know, if there's sometimes when you read like me, sometimes I read the Bible, and I'm like, what does this mean? And my, I can't grasp it. I will go to translate it from the Hebrew text and that way I'll get a true understanding of what the word might mean, you know? And we'll talk about that later on in the future, but just stick to whatever text you, you like, whichever text that you find easy to understand. And then as you go deeper and there's things that don't maybe make as much sense to you, then you can look in the translation version like the Hebrew or the Greek. All right. I think that's a good tip for all of us, what we, what we do, rather than talking about, oh, your version's wrong, your version's right, like, listen, unless we're reading from the Hebrew, you know, it is what it is, right? So we're picking up at 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, where David has just been cussed out by Goliath. So David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. Love it. Goliath moved closer to attack. David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and to cut off his head. Whoa, I told you it was juicy, guys. So to me, that text is just so beautiful. 
I see things in it that I don't know if you guys see. Like, let me know in the comments like what you guys see because I know we all see different things and that's what's beautiful about the Bible because it gives us all these layers to use for encouragement, to use for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, how to live. But what I see and what stands out to me is that David ran towards him. He didn't run away. Like how many times are we all going through things in our life and we don't want to face it? You know, even though we've got God on our side, we don't want to face it. We run away. David ran towards Goliath. That's one of the things that stands out to me. The second thing is he held the stone, but it's not the power of the stone. It was the power behind the stone. And God was that power behind the stone. So when you have situations in your life that seem bigger than you, it's not you that's going to accomplish it. It's not you that's going to defeat the situation. It's God in you. All you need to do is dash your stone. You dash your stone and let God do the rest. God was the power behind that stone. It was nothing that David did apart from being obedient to what God told him to do, right? The other thing that I love about that is that he used his own sword to cut off his head. To me, that means that we don't always have the equipment. We, don't all, we won't always be fully equipped with what God, for the, for the, we won't always be fully equipped for the job that God sent us out to do. We won't think we're equipped, but we will be equipped. God will make sure you're equipped. David pulled out Goliath's own sword and cut his head off with it after dashing the stone that had the power of the Lord Jesus Christ behind it. How beautiful is that? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. So guys, that concludes our story today on ignoring the haters and letting God use you. And remember, it's not you, it's the power behind the stone. It's the power behind you, which is God. All right? Can't wait to speak to you guys again, and I'll see you in the next one. Walk it like I'm talking. Walk it like I'm talking. Walk it, walk it like I'm talking. Walk it like I'm talking.